You know, I've uh, been a fan of Peter Atia since I saw his original TED talk talking about he, he broke into tears. Uh, he was talking about how he treated or what he was thinking about a diabetic patient when he was a surgery resident. Um, he had to remove her leg and she was obese and he was blaming the patient. And um, again, the ability to be that, uh, that transparent is very impressive. I became even much more of a Peter Atia fan when I was listening to one of his um, podcasts with, uh, with uh, I think it's Thomas Dayspring, with uh, Dayspring, and he, was, he started off the uh, podcast by saying, uh, I, my complete and utter buffoonery regarding HDL lipidology just never ceases to amaze me. And the reason I bring that up is I have some of that same feeling when we're, we start talking about Vesepa or Vesepa, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And you'll hear me pronounce it both ways. What is Vesepa? Uh, you go back to the Reduce It trials. When that first came out, it was being advertised as um, a super duper uh, omega-3. And that's what it is. It's a uh, uh, EPA isolated omega-3. And uh, it's been showing some really good results. We're going to talk about that uh, later today it, during the program part of the, the meeting. But before we get there, we'll talk a little bit more about the different types of content that we have available. Let's uh, get started. So <clears throat> previous topics that we've covered, the triglyceride over HDL ratio, we, had, we did a two-part uh, discussion on that. And uh, we also talked about vitamin K2, had several videos, YouTube live events on that over the past couple of months. Uh, those have been very popular. The triglyceride over HDL was very popular. And um, this fourth bullet under previous topics has been our most popular. Uh, can vitamin uh, D lower your COVID-19 risk? There was a lot of information and interest on that uh, earlier on coming out of the blocks. Um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, data has continued to mature. The science has continued to mature. And um, it's becoming pretty clear that, yes, there's a significant case to be made to make sure that you get vitamin D uh, supplementation, the proper amount. Uh, <clears throat> other content that we have available, webinars. You can access all these webinars in one place. One of the things we're thinking about doing for those, um, the subscriptions are becoming a bigger and bigger component of what we do. One of the things we're thinking about doing is uh, adding components of the webinars into the subscription content. Uh, more on that as we, as we get clearer on it. Uh, the courses, we've had uh, a, an uptick in uh, interest in the courses just over the recent past. We've been doing some, uh, some Facebook ads, some uh, Google ads, and starting to get some increased interest from people that are just totally unaware. They're not YouTube watchers. They don't know anything about the YouTube channel. Uh, they're starting to see it on Facebook and some other places and saying, you know what, let's take a look at the course. Um, I mentioned the subscription program, again, continuing to grow in popularity, continuing to look at uh, places where we can add more content into the subscription plans. Uh, as I've, <laughs> if I've said it once, I've maybe said it a hundred times, um, writing a book can be a pain. What we're going to start doing as we continue to, uh, to work with and struggle with the delays associated with the book, um, I've, uh, started leaning over the past couple of weeks of adding components of content out of the book into the blogs themselves um, that are on our uh, website. Um, <clears throat> the website it, in and of itself is continuing to, uh, to grow. We put no interest, no effort into the website for the first couple of years. In fact, up until about less than one year ago, uh, up until then, you saw like 300 website visits uh, per month. It was what you call a, a brochure website. Um, <clears throat> as the channel continued to grow, as we 
continued to, to develop our team in terms of, of content. We had always wanted to start making the content available for those of us who don't like videos, those of us who like to look at text, at written content. We started doing that a few months ago and sure enough, <clears throat> a good response to that. Um, whereas we, we within the brochure uh, website era, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we were getting uh, what? 300 website visits per month. Uh, these days we're up over 6,000 website visits for per month and growing quite a bit. So if you haven't checked out our blogs um, <clears throat> or the website recently, go take a look. Um, if you're getting the emails, the weekly email newsletter, uh, take a look at that. You can click on that uh, blog link right at the top and that'll take you right where you need to be. So. That's it for the content. And as soon as um, I take a drink of water and hopefully clear my throat, um, we'll go into the program. So we've had a management meeting. We always have it the uh, first couple of hours on Wednesday mornings. Um, and so I've been talking a lot. I do tend to, uh, to talk too much during our management meeting. Never had any problems with uh, needing to clear my throat at all until we get on the YouTube live. So thank you for, uh, for your interest and your patience with me as I struggle through. Super fish oil, Vesepa or Vesepa, is it better than regular fish oil? Now, I see, here's an interesting thing. I saw a patient earlier this week who was a, um, he's in his late 50s now, but he's got a family problem and he knows it. He said, Doc, in my 20s, I had triglyceride levels in the 400s. Let me repeat that. Yes, you heard it right. In my 20s, Doc, in my 20s, I had, um, triglyceride levels in the 400s. So <clears throat> what's he been doing and what's his triglyceride level now? I, I gosh, I can't remember it. I have to pull up the chart, but it's like, it's less than a hundred now. He's doing great work. Now he is taking a statin. He's taken statins for quite a while, uh, but he's on a fairly low dose statin now. He's uh, taking some um, fish oil as a uh, over-the-counter supplement. And that's one of the big questions that came up. He said, you know, I haven't taken Vesepa, Vesepa. Uh, I always felt like, is it really that much better than getting supplements uh, over the counter? He's taking three grams of uh, fish oil supplements daily. And here's one of the areas where I'd have to say, I don't know. And you know what? The reality is none of us know. The basic indications for Vesepa. First of all, again, Vesepa is, uh, it's a prescription strength fish oil. It's um, focused entirely on EPA. And, you know, EPA and DHA are the, the oils that you want out of omega-3s. Um, you get a lot more stuff in typical uh, fish oils. And in fact, if you've got fish oil supplement, Go get a uh, go get the bottle and look at it, and you'll see that you may get one or two grams, and it says, "Oh, you get a gram of fish oil." But look to see how much EPA you get in it. Usually, less than a third of a gram, maybe even a quarter of a gram. So again, very different stuff. The question then is, well, can I take three or four grams of the routine fish oil supplement? That's actually what I've recommended that people do, and that's what this uh, this patient that I'm describing is doing, uh, has been doing recently. He's on a uh, low carb diet, what, 20 grams of carbs per day. Um, and so he's been doing great work at keeping his, uh, his triglyceride, triglycerides, easy for me to say, huh? Triglyc triglycerides low. Now, let's, let me go back to the script, and, and uh, I'm starting to wonder a little bit. So let me get back so you can follow me. If you have a tri high triglyceride level, there are ways to lower it. Healthy diet, lose weight, address medical conditions like prediabetes or diabetes. Um, and again, 
you know, I mentioned the triglyceride over HDL ratio uh, earlier. Um, that's a big, big deal in terms of this issue. By far the most common reason that you see for elevated triglycerides is not a family hypertriglyceridemia like I'm describing in this patient. It is that pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic um, metabolism. And again, if you're not sure what we're talking about, go back to the triglyceride over HDL series. We just did a, a couple of videos on it couple of YouTube lives on it. Now, in some instances, particularly in dyslipidemic patients, the doctor may prescribe meds like Bessipa. And yes, clearly for folks that have significant um, hypertriglyceridemia, I have uh, recommended and used that. So again, you get back to the patient that we we're just talking about. And the question is, well, should we adjust the statin that he's been taking, maybe lower that some? get in a kinder, gentler, lower dose of statin and uh, add some Bessipa into it. Again, nobody really knows the answer to that. The standard for uh, uh, indication for Bessipa is someone who's on statins and still has a triglyceride level 150 or above. Bessipa, the uh, generic name is icosapent ethyl or IPE. It's a modified form of an omega-3 fatty acid. It's approved for use in the U.S. by the FDA. It was approved in July of 2012 for people with severe hypertriglyceridemia, triglycerides over 500 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, the MARINE trial, look it up. It was in uh, the New England Journal. The M MARINE trial um, was one of the... the uh, watershed trials for this act, for this uh, medication. Uh, it was approved for expanded use in December of 2019 for preventing serious heart con complications in high-risk patients already taking cholesterol-lowering meds, the Reduce It trial. Now, <clears throat> I remember talking with several people, uh, this patient earlier this week, and a lot of people, uh, John, for example, when John was working with the channel, Many of us were very skeptical about Vesipa when it started hitting um, the news last year in 2019. We said, again, maybe these guys are just, maybe big pharma is just trying to make money off of taking something, you know, doing what big pharma does. Take something that has a noticed impact like it did with um, uh, red rice yeast. Uh, and saying, or red yeast rice, I always confuse that term. You, you get something that has an impact if you're a big pharma and you do a lot of things to try to improve it and then make it a prescription drug. And that is that exactly what they did with Vesipa? Yes, of course, in, in many ways, that's what they did. So the real question for us, though, is not, is that what the big pharma did? Because big pharma did what they're always going to do. The question is, is it worth it? And if so, in which situations? Clearly, I've had, um, outside of the patient that I'm discussing, I've had plenty of patients with triglycerides, uh, two and 300 levels, also having a significant plaque, also having a significant diabetes, prediabetes, um, and also on a, already on a statin. Those are patients for whom there is no question, Vesipa does make sense. Uh, how does Vesipa work? It reduces the amount of triglycerides made in the liver. It increases the removal of triglycerides from uh, VLDL particles. Remember, again, we talked about these processes back in the triglyceride over HDL ratio discussions. The exact manner by which Vesipa does this is not known, although there have been several uh, mechanisms proposed. One of them is um, uh, beta oxidation. That is, uh, oxidation of fatty acids within the cytosol of the cell. Uh, another one is just decreasing the liver production. Uh, and another one is, <clears throat> excuse me, just uh, decreasing the uh, clotting and bleeding, clotting risk of the blood itself. We're going to go over a couple of trials here real quick for those of you who like to go over trials. <clears throat> Again, thanks for your patience. The first one is the Marine trial. That was all, all the way back to 2011. So many people think that icosapent uh, ethyl <clears throat> didn't exist prior to 19, 2019 and all the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, the news that it got last year. Well, it's been around longer than that. 
The marine, marine trial back in 2011 may have been the most pivotal. It was a study that checked the triglyceride lowering uh, level of um, icosapentethyl at that point known as AMR 101. In people with uh, triglycerides of 500 to 2000, again, huge levels. They uh, gave them the medication over a 12 week period. The four grams of Vesepa daily reduced triglycerides by uh, 45%. The two grams of Vesepa reduced triglycerides by 33%. It, it significantly reduced non-HDL cholesterol, ApoB, LPPLA2, plaque 2 those of you who remember the inflammation panel. It's the, uh, well, I won't go into that. If you have a question about what it is, remind me during the, the Q&A session. VLDL cholesterol, remember those are the very short-lived, um, very low density lipoproteins. You know, you got HDL, LDL, VLDL, and then IDL, which is intermediate density lipoproteins between VLDL and LDL. It also significantly reduced cholesterol, total cholesterol. So the conclusion at that point of the marine trial was Vesepa significantly reduced triglyceride levels and improved other lipid parameters without, ex without significantly increasing the LDL in patients with very high triglyceride levels. So that was the, the situation up until last year, 2019. There was no question at that point that this stuff was great for those patients that had really high triglycerides. And again, these are genetic issues, usually uh, triglycer triglyceride levels, 500 and above. Even you, once you get over 300, you need to start looking at and thinking about potential for uh, genetic variations in metabolism. <clears throat> Superficial, Vesepa, better than fish oil, reduce it trial. This, this is the second study. This was in uh, 2019. It was also a groundbreaking study. It uh, showed that it, it lowers your risk by, uh, of a life-threatening heart attack or stroke by 25% when added to a statin. It was done on patients with established cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or other risk factors. Uh, these are patients that had been receiving statin therapy had uh, fasting triglyceride levels of 135 to 499. So again, what we've done with the reduce it trial is go down a significant amount. You don't find a lot of people with triglycerides over 500. You find a lot of people with triglyceride levels 130 and above. Uh, they also had uh, LDL cholesterols of 41 to 100. The results were that patients treated with a total of four grams of Vesepa daily had uh, cardiovascular, fewer cardiovascular uh, events, 17.2%, compared to those who took a placebo, 22%. The conclusion was that among patients with elevated triglycerides, despite use of statins, the risk of ischemic events, including cardiovascular death, was significantly lower among those who took the two grams of Vesepa or Vesepa. Vesepa, Vescapa, two times daily, other than uh, compared to the ones that received the placebo. And again, you see some information. It's one of their ads. Um, this came out of the New England Journal article on it. Uh, Deepak Bot, you'll see Deepak Bot in uh, the little one, two minute video that we have later on in the, uh, in the show on Vesepa. Now, there's a new trial. The evaporate trial, and it came from Matthew Matthew Budoff. Anybody remember him? He's often known as the uh, the father of the cal calcium score, coronary calcium score. He did a study. It was a small one. He enrolled eighty patients, aged thirty to eighty-five years old, with known coronary atherosclerosis and on a stable statin therapy. The patients received four grams of Vesepa daily or a placebo. A multi-detector CT, MDCT uh, scan was done at um, nine months followed by a final scan at 18 months. This is very similar to a CT angiogram, which we've talked about many times. If you don't, if you're not familiar with CT angiogram, uh, just go to our YouTube channel uh, or Google 
YouTube, Ford Brewer, CT angiogram. <clears throat> Compared with placebo, Basipo significantly reduced multiple plaque components, including vulnerable plaque in patients with elevated triglycerides and on statin therapy. Now, here's one place where I get a little concerned. I have a little bit of a, um, I don't believe in the term or concept vulnerable plaque. Basically, and I think that's a that's an overgeneralization overgeneralization of the term. Basically, what they were talking about is soft plaque. Now that I believe in, um, and there's no question about it. The science is is replete with that term, uh, soft plaque, and I believe that's what they're referring to here. Despite the small sample size, Butoff and his colleagues noted benefits of Vesepa or Vesepa on outcomes and plaque reduction as early as nine months with increasing significance by 18 months. And here you see the, um, the bar chart. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first elegant marriage of clinical trial results, reduce it, and imaging evaporate, Butoff said. These data highlight the early and substantial impact of IPE icosapent ethyl on the atherothrombotic burden in this at-risk population. And again, you could, you've got the link to the study itself if you'd like to take a look. So we're gonna show you a little two minute video. And again, it was part of where Deepak Bhatt was uh, making some of his press release. Aspen. After Dr. Mark Polner suffered a heart attack more than 20 years ago, preventing another became a priority. It's the key to life. I mean, if you don't have a good heart, you know, it limits your whole lifestyle. Now, a new study presented today at the American Heart Association's annual meeting and published in the New England Journal of Medicine is finding that a prescription drug made of pure fish oil could significantly reduce the risk of a heart attack. I think it's the biggest development in cardiovascular prevention since statins were introduced. Researchers looked at more than 8,000 patients who had elevated levels of fat in the blood called triglycerides and were taking a statin to lower cholesterol. They found those who also took the daily prescription fish oil drug called Vesepa lowered the risk of having a cardiovascular event by 25%. The risk of death dropped 20%. I think that this trial and its findings hopefully will be immediately practice changing and useful for patients. But beyond that, I think we'll spawn a whole line of scientific research trying to figure out how did this drug work. The drug is FDA approved and costs $278 a month. Side effects include a low risk of internal bleeding. But for Dr. Mark Polner, who's been taking the drug for the last five months, he now has more peace of mind. Hopefully it will uh, keep me going for the next 30 years. Dr. Torres, is this a fish oil you can buy at the vitamin aisle at a bodega or a pharmacy? No, it's very different. These results don't apply to over-the-counter fish oil supplements. They contain a very different form of fish oil. This capsule does contain omega-3s, but it's highly purified, and it does require a prescription. So a lot of interest in this topic, a lot of questions coming up already. Um, so let me get started with a few of the uh, questions and answers. Uh, Bart Robinson, good morning, Doc. Looking forward to this topic. I am too. And like I said, I'm a little bit intimidated by the topic because there's so much I don't know. But one of the things that's therapeutic is it's actually the answer that uh, uh, Dayspring gave to Atia when he was talking about how little he knew about HDL lipidology. He said, the rest of us don't know either, so don't get so wrapped up about it. Uh, good, good morning, Bart. BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Good morning, Doc. Great topic. I agree. Very interesting, exciting topic. Jackie Shaheen, good morning. It's been a while. Thank you. Dr. J, PhD, is Lavaza a good source for omega-3 for someone who has triglyceride levels of 57, not taking med for triglyceride? Assume that since it has to go through FDI trials, it's a pure source of omega-3. Now, I'm not that familiar with Lavaza. I should be. I will say this. Again, Dr. J, you're bringing up the really good point that uh, a lot of us have. It, it, 
in the beginning, back in eight, 10 years ago, it became really clear that these extremely, these uh, extremely pure prescription level uh, uh, omega threes, EPA, pure EPA, was very helpful for those folks with 500 and above. With 2019, the reduce it trials, and uh, 2020, the uh, the evaporate trials, they're beginning to show. You know what? This is very helpful for those what, a hundred to a thousand people with uh, triglycerides 130 to 500 for every one person 500 and above. But here's the question, you know, uh, how about those of us with lower numbers? When does it, when does it stop? I will tell you this, I do recommend over the counter um, uh, omega threes for reasons that I think most of us can understand. Anonymous, hi, curious, is it better than fermented cod liver oil? That's a great question. And I don't, th I, I, maybe I'm gonna have to get used to, to this answer. I don't know. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, maybe for me, uh, as the guy standing up with the temerity to give a YouTube on this, I don't think any of us knows the answer to that right now. Anonymous, good question. Krill versus fish oils, what's the difference? Uh, again, I've gone back and forth on krill versus fish. You know, you get a lot of questions about um, uh, fish oils and are they, are they, um, processed appropriately or do you get a lot of uh, rotting uh, of the fish oil during the production while it's still on the boat? Um, and then you get some statements about, well, krill is a, a big problem for the environment. Again, you're going to, you're going to go into major debate on that. And I am not going to be your expert there. Anonymous or krill or regular cod liver oil or salmon oil. You know, so here's what I do for the most part. I do supplement with krill and I do eat salmon, a good bit of salmon, uh, like four or five times a week. Um, do I, and I, you know, I get, I get hater comments whenever I say that too. They say, Doc, don't you know that that salmon is the nastiest fish in the world? Haven't you seen those videos of it? Yes, I've seen those videos. Yes, I understand some of that. But you know what? Uh, people are, and I'm going to get a lot of haters for this comment too. Uh, even with the salmon farming, as nasty as it might be, you don't see, at least it's not documented yet, a whole lot of health problems associated with that. Anything compared to the health problems associated with cardiovascular disease. So, yep, are there better sources? I'm sure there are. Um, I, like I said, I know going into this video, there was going to be a lot of questions about what are the best sources uh, environmentally? What are the best sources in terms of health outcomes? And we just don't know. You're going to have to, to, you know, I think it was Pogo that said, you pay your money, you take your licks. Uh, Thurston Howell the third. Good morning, Thurston. Bill H. As Vesepa or Vesepa is prescription, it's no doubt very expensive and far higher than ordinary fish oil pricing. Well, you saw the price, 270 bucks per month. So, yep, that's more expensive than supplementation. Uh, anonymous, at Dauber, krill is rare, has estazanthine, spelled that wrong. Yeah, I know. And I probably pronounced it wrong too, anonymous, and is eaten by salmon. My BJJ Carlson, available on Amazon, has a supplement that's 1,000 milligrams EPA with very little DHA. I take four grams EPA per day. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that, Carlson. And I'm interested to see what it is that you're taking that has a thousand milligrams of EPA in it. I take four, gram, uh, four grams EPA per day, consistent with the reduce it, and we'll switch to Carlson soon. Very interesting, so it's Carlson. Got to take a look at that. Thank you so much, BJJ, for sharing that. Why would you want little DHA? Well, that is maybe a good question. There's some literature that high omega-3 may reduce LP little a. Yes, correct. See Tasmania study. Personally, I was able to reduce my LP little a. This is BJJ talking. 
about 5% over four grams of EPA per day equals 10, 12 nanomoles per uh, liter reduction. I know of others who also did. Yes, there is. Uh, I think there's enough experience out there to indicate that um, omega-3s can and do help with LP little a. And uh, pardon me before I start going down an LP little a bunny hole. Bart Robinson, I also use, I usually purchase Carlson brand, excellent company, great quality control. Thank you so much, guys. I was not aware of it. Uh, and uh, Bart says, I also like their liquid fish oil. BJJ, four grams of EPA was using over the counter, so I was also getting a higher dose of DHA. Uh, C. Lear, thanks for sharing your knowledge. I take 2,400 milligrams fish oil daily. My triglycerides are 44. Impressive, very nice. Should I reduce fish oil to 1,200 milligrams? Are there other reasons to take fish oil? Um, I think the answer is uh, nobody knows. We clearly know that, you know, if you had levels 500 or more, clearly need to take that. If you had levels 130, 150 or more, clearly need to take that. What's not known is how much uh, these help and how much you should take if your triglycerides are less than 150. Chero Sullivan, I took this and it gave me a horrible sore throat. That's interesting. I'm, I, I have to wonder if A, there was a timing issue or B, if you tried other sources, wondering if, you know, maybe you had a allergic reaction to it. I, I've just never heard of people having a sore throat from um, fish oil. Bart Robinson, many other fish, uh, benefits of fish oil indeed. It helped my condition of dry eyes also. BJJ, the idea in minimizing DHA is to stay consistent with the evidence from reduce it. Correct. Uh, I mean, again, I, I don't, I'm not aware of a huge amount of research indicating that DHA is bad. There's just been that focus on EPA. Plus, it's a matter of taking six pills a day. That's right. It becomes a logistic issue. Six pills a day versus four pills to achieve uh, four, uh, four grams of EPA. Jackie Shaheen, I was about to ask the same basic question. Years ago, I was supplementing my exercise activity with hydroxycrut extreme and triglyceride dropped to 44. I stopped taking too much caffeine. So a hydroxy cut, and there were several different types of, and still are different types of supplements which people use to cut, in other words, decrease fat. Most of those are decreased subcutaneous you know, body fat, you know, those saddlebags. Uh, most of those have some sort of, um, have uh, amphetamine-like properties as well. Um, and the question becomes, well, Jackie Shaheen, for example, was maybe getting too many, too much caffeine. And amphetamine's the wrong term. I, I meant to say um, uh, caffeine. Caffeine. Please uh, take that as a self, an, a self correction there. Uh, one true moose. When looking at omega three, isn't it also important to look at the intake of omega six? Um, yes. Again, it's not like we want to get rid of all omega-6. Here's what the issue is, though, that if you look at the standard American diet, uh, the, the vast majority of us tend to have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3. Um, and you can test for that. There are tests that are out there. There's been some question about the validity of those tests. Um, I think, you know, like, Many of the lab tests that are out there, you have to uh, to dig deep to see you know, how much you want to trust them. Uh, I've seen plenty of omega-3, omega-6 uh, tests. I do think it's worthwhile looking at, if nothing other than to continue to remind you that um, that, that omega-3 level is important. So Thurston Howell, the third scan. I must have been having a blocking on a word or something. Maybe Thurston was helping me there. One true moose, great name. Linoleic acid is a precursor of ar arachidonic acid, which is a precursor of mostly inflammatory icosinoids. Uh, Both linoleic acid and arachidonic acid are constituents of cell membranes. Thank you, one true moose. John Osborne, I've had the FAD2SMP. Oh, interesting. 
My body requires four grams of omega-3s daily, and I have stopped cardiovascular disease along with other methods. Thank you so much, John, for sharing that. It's really nice when somebody comes on the channel and they say, look, you know what? This doc's here. He may be saying whatever he's saying. I'm a patient. I got it. Here's what I'm doing. Very, very helpful. DHA is important for brain health. Thank you, John. Yes, that is true. Um, won't go any further other than to say thank you. Yes, there's clearly evidence that that's the case. Bob Bell, is there any evidence that patients with low triglycerides, less than 50 milligrams per deciliter, have better outcomes with VASIPA? That is a great question, and it's exactly what I keep perseverating over. And pardon me for those of you who don't know that term. Perseverate means to persevere over a concept or topic. It's a mental health issue. When a psychiatrist is uh, examining somebody and the person keeps going back to an issue, as you'll see, I keep going back to what we don't know. But I'm not the only one. The rest of us keep going back to that same question. What about uh, uh, the omega-3 oils for the people with triglycerides, 150 or less? And specifically, what about these, um, these uh, super omega-3 oils like Vesipa? and people with triglycerides 150 or less. You know, I think the reality is um, they've done testing. They didn't test a whole lot of people at these lower levels. Um, and I just don't think they've got enough information yet to, uh, to say for sure. I will also say though, I think that um, there's enough big pharma money looking at that to where they would love to see uh, indications for um, for triglycer triglyceride levels less than 100. I think if, uh, if they were to find that, we'd probably be hearing about it pretty soon. Bottom line is you're going to be getting, the other thing is, as you get deeper into the science on this, you're going to be getting to a point of diminishing returns. And again, I think that's what we're all perseverating over. Where is that point of diminishing returns? And how does that that point uh, separate out for each of us as individuals? Uh, the conversation I was having with my hypertriglyceridemia patient uh, earlier this week was similar to a question that I'm sure John Osborne that you've, you've uh, had in your own mind, John, and that is, okay, is there any reason for me to go ahead and take uh, Bacipa? even if I'm doing well with what I have. Good point, John Osborne. Krill is too expensive for the amount you get. Thank you, John, for sharing that. I appreciate your attendance today. Mezzanine 44, Dr. William Davis advocates for three to something grams EPA daily, uh, EPA DHA daily, has for years along with magnesium and others. And Dr. William Davis uh, is a smart guy. He's not alone. I think those are pretty standard uh, recommendations. BJJ, I know several others who have 10% LP little a reduction range taking a four gram of EPA via six gram of fish oil. Is it possible that it could account for much of the MACE reduction from reduce it? Much more study is needed. You know, BJJ, you're starting to sound like a, a, an academic study author. Go and, and start reading these studies and you'll, you'll hear the same thing. Every time somebody finishes a study, they all, almost always end with, you know, we need to do a lot more studies. You know, what happens is once you start digging into science, you start realizing just how much it is that we don't know. And I think that's one of the one of the recurring themes that you'll see out of this video and these, uh, the reduce it trials, the evaporate trials, the, the marine trials. There's a lot of interesting information. There's a lot that we know, but there's just so much that we don't. Now you're bringing up an issue of what we don't know about LP little a. Um, you know, it's interesting. We're finally getting some traction on LP little a and that started, I, I can't help it. I'm gonna to have to go down a little bit of a bunny hole regarding LP little a. Um, LP little a was just ignored. 
Uh, and here's why. For, they, for years, maybe decades, we knew that LP little a was a, a heart attack and stroke risk, but um, here was the other thing. They also knew that there were some things like uh, omega-3s decreased at maybe 10%. Niacin decreased usually about 25, 30%. And um, here was the, the standard assumption from the quote experts, end quote, the, um, the medical practice uh, standards committees. They said, well, you know, these things help. Omega-3, uh, niacin, but they don't help a whole lot. So we, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna recommend that cardiologists or, or doctors look at LP little a. So for decades, we, or for a long time, for years, we knew about LP little a as a risk, but we just didn't look at it. Well, some people did, and, um, some, and people do need to know if they've got a risk. What they tended to say, you saw from the guys at Mayo, for example, they said, well, if somebody has LP little a, just give them a statin. And you know, why is that? Well, statins may help with their other risk factors. Well, there is a case for looking at other risk factors, but again, you need to go back and be open with people, share with them what their uh, risk factors are. I'm going to make one more statement about LP little a, and then I'll jump back out of that bunny hole. And thank you uh, for your patience with me on that issue. So <clears throat> people kept saying, well, uh, omega-3 and niacin, only decrease LP little a a little bit, so they're not any good. That's not true. That, to me, that was an incorrect assumption. You go back and you start looking at things like inflammation panels, and inflammation panels tended to uh, consistently improve as you got these minimal decreases in LP little a. So the point being, maybe the assumption of totally eradicating your LP little a was way too much to ask for. Maybe we were getting significant improvement in the risk associated with LP little a with just a 25, 15, 25%, 30% decrease. And I do think that was the truth. Again, for those of you who don't have LP little a, don't know what we're talking about, thank you so much for your patience in listening to my little rant on that issue. Thurston Howell III, would Vesepa benefit us generally for inflammation as we think high quality omega-3? I think it would. I'm thinking help for long haul COVID sufferers. That's an interesting question as well. Again, another one of those interesting questions that we don't have any answers to yet. Dr. William Davis is great. That's from John Osborne. I agree. I uh, um, I've watched a few of his things and I'm a, uh, I would agree. Jonathan Hull, good morning, Dr. B. Can we get an equivalent effect with over-the-counter fish oil? What dosage per day? Well, Jonathan, I think you, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we jumped around on it and maybe we weren't that easy to follow. Uh, with Vesepa itself, the typical doses are what? One, two, four milligrams uh, total per day. It's in a, uh, twice a day or Q12 hour uh, dosage. Uh, when you look at EPA, the standards uh, have been to try to get at least a gram of EPA, uh, maybe two grams, some people would say more. So I hope that helps. And you tend to get what? About half the, the uh, DHA that you get with EPA. And again, somebody fact check me on that. I'm trying to move quickly through some of the Q&A here. Harvesting process for krill is expensive. Yes, the harvesting process is expensive and some people would say it's damaging our environment. I'm not an expert on either of those areas. Mezzanine 44, Carlston three to four teaspoons is the liquid daily that I do. Thank you, Mezzanine, I appreciate it. And guys, I greatly appreciate this discussion because I was not familiar with Carlson. I'm going to go take a look. John Osborne, I use Wonder Labs Easy Omega 3 with DPA. Thank you, John. Research DPA Super Nutrient Omega 3. I will do that. BJJ, great podcast. Peter Atia interview with Bill Harris, The Drive number 83. Harris is one of the top Omega 3 experts in the world. 
Thank you so much, BJJ. And I have not heard that one. Gianni Jimpa, what dosage daily becomes too much of Vesipa? Well, again, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think they've done any research beyond uh, the uh, four grams. And one of the things to be aware of is that uh, too much of the fish oils can cause bleeding. So these are not totally harmless uh, types of uh, drugs. Only one fish on the planet Earth makes DPA in decent quantities. Well, John, what fish is that? The Menhaden fish. Very interesting. Four DPA. John, you've obviously been way deep in that space. We just had, uh, we're getting a lot of questions, a lot of comments, and the thing just jumped. I think I am, okay. Wellness path for me, IFOS, five-star fish oil, is, a, is way better than the average store brand. Krill is very low in active ingredients. Coworker of mine in, in his 30s had a correlated 85% reduction in his lifelong stuttering. Interesting. Within two weeks of taking between 2.4 and, 2 and 4.8, uh, grams of EPA slash DHA. Interesting. Uh, Jim Dandy sounds like an IgE reaction. I would agree. And I think you're referring back to that sore throat. I, a wellness path. I have a friend who plays tennis pain free in his 40s for the first time in his life. Had been playing, uh, had pain playing in his teens. Omega Via is pure omega 3, 500 milligrams per capsule. Uh, Five-star fish oil is a hack. Look at iron behaving badly. Sir Douglas Bell, uh, literally knighted by the British oils, royals. Consider whether you want to ingest carcinogenic iron filings fortified into the food supply back into the 40s. Mm. Talk about uh, bunny trails. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to follow that one. Sorry about that wellness. I just don't know anything about uh, iron filings in, uh, added to the food supply in the 40s. Bart Robinson, many quality over-the-counter brands uh, source natural now foods, Carlston, just to name a few. Thank you, Bart. Morley Robbins is all over the scientific literature that exposes iron as being very toxic. Well, yeah, iron can be very, very toxic. Uh, yes, the DHA is important. I get plenty of DHA from eating three ounces of salmon per day and will probably take a mix of three Carlson, one gram capsules, and one capsule of Nordic Nat, which is 700 over 400 range for EPA for, uh, over DHA. Amer al Gayer, thank you so much for joining us from Germany. Hello. Dr. Barry Sears says you need to measure your arachidonic acid over EPA ratio to determine IFOS uh, fish oil ingestion. Standard American diet, uh, diet average is 12 or higher, and I think optimal is between one and two. Omega RX is the best value, uh, five star. If it's, it's about 23 per bottle, shipping is free. I can support with the literature that one milligrams per deciliter reduction of LPA, LP little a results in approximately 1.6 reduction in mace. It is a rough number by a small move in LP little a. It gets a big result in reduced uh, outcomes. Thank you, BJJ. Actually, I would love to get uh, to see what literature you're, uh, you're focusing on. I have no doubt myself, obviously given what I said a few minutes ago. ZV1, I think that's Joe, Joe Riley. I'm taking 3.5 grams of fish oil, but my triglyceride over HDL ratio is still 1.55. And my LP little a is still 373 while taking two grams of niacin. Might Vesipa work better on both problems? I don't know if it would work better, uh, but it's certainly worth a trial, Joe. Uh, if, it's certainly worth a trial. And if I can help, let me know. World Traveler, I started on Lavallo one milligram daily after your recommendation. I was taking five milligrams Crestor before. Which statin is best for reducing my inflammation? Well, here's the thing. If you can, if you can get the result with the Lavallo, uh, I prefer that because Lavallo has less of an impact on uh, prediabetes. That's why Lavallo is so much more expensive. 
um, you may want to take a look at, uh, at uh, the higher doses of Lavalo as well. Omega, J. Bertucci, J.J. Bertucci, Omega Via is pure Omega-3. Thank you, J.J. No DHA. Well, I thought DHA was an Omega-3, one of the two or three Omega-3s. Maybe somebody can help us out with a little fact check there. Patsy Stone, I've, I have iron loading disorder. Should I be concerned about fish oil and why are people concerned? I, I, don't, I don't know, Patsy, and somebody else can maybe help me draw that connection too. I, this is the first time I'm hearing significant connections between iron and fish oil. I think, so Patsy's short story is, I think maybe I missed it too, and maybe I'm showing my ignorance, but I'm not, I missed it as well. Sorry, Oma Pure is the best. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna continue to get into arguments about which one. Uh, mezzanine 44, peripheral neuropathy with the torvastatin and rosuvastatin. Tolerate red yeast rice, however, 1,200 milligrams daily. Is the statin effect anti-inflammatory, significant and worthwhile? Uh, red rice yeast, or yet red yeast rice? I don't know. I, um, that's actually a good question. Most of the statins have some uh, anti-inflammatory effect. The torvastatin, the most popular one, has less anti-inflammatory effect if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic or if you're a female. So um, it, female is obviously half the population. If you're pre-diabetic pre or diabetic, that's 80% of the remaining population that's on, that's needing to take statins. So that's the problem. Um, now, again, it's a great question about uh, anti-inflammatory effect of uh, red yeast rice, and I do not know the answer to that. I would assume so, but that's an assumption. That's not uh, based on science review. Wellness path for me, fish oil is an anti-inflammatory, iron is an oxidant that promotes inflammation. Well, thank you for that clarification, and yes, I think, uh, I think that's the case. Thank you so much for your interest today. Um, again, I, uh, it was a lot of fun today. <clears throat> we dealt with a lot of stuff that none of us knows just yet, um, but obviously very important questions. Thank you for your interest.